Looks now for James, could find space to shoot, James off the post, how many times? But this time, such a relief, the rebound falls right to David Brooks, who puts that one in the back of the net. Looks for Augustine, oh he's just bursting past the City defenders here, and he gets his hat-trick. Unbelievable from Jean-Kevin Augustine. It's been a really long and difficult season, but here we are with just four games to go with the possibility of having Champions League football for next season. Season 2 with Leeds has been incredible. And we've got a chance to top it off with something special. Four games to go, we're fourth in the Premier League. If we can get results in this episode, yep, next season, Leeds are going to be in the Champions League. That game against Man United at Old Trafford is going to decide whether Leeds make it to the Champions League or not. How crazy is that? That's going to be one hell of a game in today's episode. Of course, once we're done with the Premier League, we're going to review our season, see how we've performed, see the stats of our players, and of course, we'll have the end of season award ceremony. So, a lot's going to go down in today's episode as we wrap up the second season with Leeds. If you guys are enjoying this career mode, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get this underway. It's now time for a press conference. Get involved by dropping in your questions for the next season in the comments section below. First one of the day. What do you think of Ben Chilwell's transfer to Chelsea and Chelsea's whole transfer window so far? Absolutely incredible. It's not just Ben Chilwell. They've signed Ziyech, Timo Werner and even Malang Saar recently. It's been unbelievable the window they've had. Even Kai Havertz, how could I forget? They're literally playing career mode in real life and well, there you go. Ben Chilwell to Chelsea was announced yesterday. Chelsea have had the best transfer window so far, hands down. Next question at the moment, Leon Bailey is one of Leeds United's targets. What do you think will happen? I don't really know. Maybe this transfer could go through in real life. Of course, Leeds just signed Rodrigo for like 30 million. So I'm not sure if they've got money left to go big for Leon Bailey because he'll certainly be an expensive transfer. In this series though, the way we play, I'm not really looking to bring in Leon Bailey. Don't get me wrong, he's fantastic on FIFA. Remember when we did the Bayer Leverkusen career mode a few months ago, how good he was. But in this series, I'm not really considering bringing him unless the transfer goes through in real life. But for now, Leon Bailey is not on my radar. Now this next comment is about Rodrigo. Last episode, I asked you guys whether we should directly transfer him into our team without spending money because... This deal has gone through in real life and it seems like most of you guys agree with that sentiment. So next season, we'll have Rodrigo in our Leeds United setup and we won't be spending a penny on him. We'll use the transfer budget that we've got elsewhere. And well, this is the comment. I believe you should just have him at your club. It's unfair to waste so much money just for a transfer that has already happened. I get y'all and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to have a 30-year-old Rodrigo who's going to offer us really good squad depth, especially considering we do use a two-striker formation. Maybe... With this signing going through, we can maybe sell Cavani to generate some extra funds for a potential transfer I'm looking to make. We'll talk about that in Season 3. But Rodrigo next season will be a part of our lead setup. With that press conference done, let's move on. Hat-trick hero Augustine. Last episode, he was just outrageous. A hat-trick against Man City. How insane is that? He was phenomenal in that last episode and no wonder he is your player of the episode. Now I do want to discuss transfers in today's episode but I'm going to keep that on hold until we're done with the Premier League season. Our focus right now is getting that Champions League spot for next season so let's push for that. Season goals wise I do want to make good progress in this episode because it directly gives us extra funds for next season so I'm hoping we can wrap up both the Golden Boy as well as the top six challenge and maybe we can complete the Premier League quality objective as well. And so the race for that Champions League spot begins. Our first game is against Everton and we don't have happy memories of facing Everton because they've beaten us 4-0 twice in this series. So it's going to be a difficult game but if we want Champions League football, we need to be able to get results against teams like them. So we're facing 10th placed Everton. We need a win here. We absolutely cannot afford a slip up here. We need a good performance and we need the win. This is how I've got my team lined up. Of course, we don't have Jamal Lewis who picked up that injury. So Alioski plays. But apart from him, pretty much our standard first 11. Let's go out there and beat Everton and make more progress towards that Champions League spot. Not gonna lie, I kind of feel pretty confident for this fixture. I know we've suffered a lot at the hands of Everton losing 4-0 twice in this series. But in our last game, we showed that we can compete against even the big teams and destroy them as well as we beat City 6-1. So 
I'm confident. Let's hope that can translate into a victory here. Here's James Rodriguez on the ball right now, waiting for Cavani to make that run. Cavani has made the run, brings it inside. Could be our first goal of the game. No way has Pickford saved that. What a chance are the header is not towards Augustine, but good early showings. We're creating chances. James and Cavani linked up really well there. Augustine does so well. Big chance for him to score the first of this game. Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. Our best player in the team. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because in the big games, it's always him that scores against City, against even Liverpool. Whenever we face them, he is just the biggest game player I've seen on this in this series at the very least. Because how good is he, man? Jean Kevin Augustine comes up clutch yet again in a game we need to win against the team that's embarrassed us a few times. He's the one that scores and we make it 1-0. Just the start we needed in this one. Let's keep pushing. Cavani on the ball now. Looks for Brooks. I could find Augustine here. I'm going to go for the pass. Augustine gets in behind once again. Still Augustine brings it inside. Looks for Brooks. Left foot. Bang. That's off the post. I was ready to celebrate that because I thought it was going in 100%. So unlucky not to be 2 0 up at half time. Everton playing some good football. Moise Keen on the ball. That's good defending from Ben White. Saved us in that instance. We can't afford to concede a goal now because it'll be 1 1, and I do not want to be in that situation. So big ups to Ben White and Juan Foyt, who've been really good at the back in this game. Here we go now with Billy Gilmore. Looks inside for Brooks. Backwards for Calvin Phillips. Brooks gets back up, which is nice to see. Now looks for Cavani, who's opened up a bit of space. That is phenomenal from Edinson Cavani. Wow. One of our best players this season. On the pitch, he's been so, so influential. You guys were doubting me for signing him for that wages and for, of course, the age and all. But he's put in a phenomenal season. 20 plus goals, a ton of assists. And yet again, when we need our strikers to perform, they have delivered. Augustine with the first goal. And now Edinson Cavani. But I'll tell you what, that assist from Brooks was class as well. And also, what a finish from our number nine. Leeds United make it 2-0 against Everton. Lucas Digne now looking for Charles. Here's a big chance here for the Brazilian. Looks for a cross and it's a good one. Fair enough, Bolasi. That is one hell of a finish from him on the volley as well. Yannick Bolasi back at Everton and he's now brought Everton back in the game as well. We're still leading 2-1, so we've got to be calm. Here is James Rodriguez on the ball. Does so well. Looks for Brooks. What a pass that is. Brooks should score. That is a beautiful finish from Brooks. And that should settle the game. James picking up an assist and Brooks with the goal. Leeds United lead 3-1. Can't see Everton mounting a comeback. And this could be a huge step for us to secure that Champions League spot. Big goal from David Brooks. We are one step closer to that Champions League dream with this 3-1 win. What a performance from Agustin, Cavani... And even David Brooks for that matter. Three games to go in the Premier League. I think we can do it. The battle between us and Man United is still ongoing for that last spot. But now Arsenal have joined the fray. No, not really. They've, they've just played more games than the other teams. Chelsea still a point above us right now. Our next game is against Leicester City. But we may have a bit of a problem. This is where our squad gets really tested. Because look at this, guys. Leicester City on a Sunday. A couple of days later, we play Man United. That is absolutely not ideal and I'm not a fan of it. But we just got to get through this period and just hope for the best. That's the plan. How confident are you of qualifying for the Europa League? I mean, we're bringing European football to this club, but I want Champions League. I don't want the BTEC Champions League. Leicester City have dropped off a fair bit. They're 11th in the Premier League. So simulating this game might work in our favour. And there you go. Augustine gets the goal and we managed to beat them 2-1. That was close. Cavani and Augustine are goal scorers. I'm just hoping our players can somehow recover some stamina for that United game. Simulated this one against Leicester City who have dropped down significantly in the Premier League standings. I think they're 11th in the league so it made sense to simulate this game. We got the job done as well with James scoring. That helps us out massively but Ben White getting a red card means he'll miss the game against Man United. That is not good for us. And Ketia did score which is nice but... We might have a few issues against Manchester United, but regardless, a big win for us. Everything we've worked towards throughout the season comes down to this game as Leeds United take on Manchester United at Old Trafford. A game which decides pretty much who gets Champions League football. We beat them here, United are out of contention, and we've basically guaranteed ourselves a Champions League spot. Who would have thought we'd be competing with Man United for this at the start of the season. Nobody, but here we are, Old Trafford. This is about to be epic. Will you secure a Champions League place in your next match? I'm just gonna say, 
we're going for the win. We are. We really are going for the win. We beat Man United or even a draw for that matter. And it's secured at Champions League back at Elland Road. In a way, it is fitting that Liam Cooper gets to captain us in one of our most important games in the history of Leeds United, I would say. But at the same time, I would have rather had Ben White. Anyways, apart from that, I'm pretty much going with my first team, even though we are struggling for stamina on a lot of the players. We don't really have a choice at this point. I'm still going with Augustine, Cavani, Brooks and all. Shackleton comes in to give us a bit of energy, but this is going to be a tough affair. What a way to potentially wrap up our season against Man United. If we beat them, we secure Champions League football. We lose... We still have a chance, but it'll be a bit difficult. But this is the Man United team we're up against. They've got a good back line with Sula and Maguire. Well, Maguire should be in prison, by the way. I don't even know how is he there. But anyway, Pogba, McTominay, Bruno Fernandes, Richarlison. That is a solid Man United team. No wonder they've made a comeback from being 10th in the Premier League to now, what, 5th? How crazy is it that in our second season with Leeds, we're at Old Trafford, the Theatre of Dreams, fighting with Man United for a Champions League spot. That's honestly incredible, but we are here and we're not here just, just to show up. We're here to perform, we're here to deliver and pretty much knock Man United out of the Champions League. James, I see Cavani in space and already we could be on for the first goal. Maguire has been caught out. Cavani looks for Brooks. Juan Bissaka does well. Pogba keeping hold of Brooks. Brooks with some neat dribbling. Needs to find a bit of space. Goes for a pass for Cavani who turns and shoots, but he's offside. We kind of messed up the chance there. Ah, oh, that should have been 1-0. I, I completely messed things up. I remember Shackleton scored in that game against Man City. Can he have yet another terrific performance? He's probably the fittest player on the pitch here. Looks for Augustine. Big first chance for us. Still Augustine shoots with a lot of power off the post. You can't write this stuff. 12 minutes in, we've bottled two massive opportunities. And now United could potentially hit us on the break with Bruno Fernandes here. I am not liking this. Still Bruno, we got to stop him here. And he stops himself by running out. But man, I'm gutted. We could have made it 1-0 or possibly even 2-0 by this point. Bruno Fernandes here looks for Richarlison. Why is he passed it out wide to Pizzi? He could have gone on his own. But Alioski then recovers well. Pizzi makes a mistake and we don't concede from that attack. Richarlison, I don't know what he did there. He could have gone for goal himself. Bruno Fernandes goes for goal. Bruno Fernandes almost scoring a screamer. Who that was tense. That was really intense. But... He misses. Oh, Calvin Phillips has won that. Still Calvin. Looks for Edinson Cavani. Good first touch. Could play the ball back inside. Oh, come on. Dean Henderson collects that one well. But again, good pressing from our midfielders. And Cavani did well, ultimately, to get there. Man United are really growing into this game. And I don't like it. Good defending from us. But we give it away in stupid fashion. Rashford back to Luke Shaw. Back to Marcus Rashford. Problems here for us. Can we deal with this? we got to clear the ball away. Bruno with a massive chance wasted. How did he score from there? I think Alioski got his head to it because otherwise that was guaranteed 1-0 Man United. Oh, here we go though. Man United exposed. Man United have been exposed at the back. Still Augustine. Oh, come on. Maguire. Since when has he become like prime Carlos Puyol? How is he blocking everything? Half time against United. It's been a tough fight. Even match, I guess, so far. But as things stand, we make it to the Champions League and Man United don't. Let's see what the second half has got to offer. PZ on the attack now for, of course, Man United. No way is he getting past me there. Liam Cooper did incredibly well. Tell you what, our captain has given a good performance in the absence of Ben White. So I'm, I'm really happy for him that he's getting his moment to play against Man United in such an important game. And he's doing well. Not gonna lie, this game has the feel of a fixture where it seems like nobody wants to lose. Both teams are just so scared of getting embarrassed. And it seems like, yeah, that's why Man United aren't pushing for a goal at all. But it's funny because Man United do know that if they don't get a win here, their Champions League hope is crushed. So I'm not sure what is behind this kind of an approach from them. But we'll see. It might work out. They might get a chance to score. Yes, Pogba on the ball. This is tough for us. Foyt does incredibly well and we avoid conceding there. Ooh, that was stressful. James is absolutely done for. He basically can't run anymore. So we'll just see with Cavani what we can do here. Still Cavani pushing forward here. I could look for a pass. Augustine, whose stamina is super low as well. Still Augustine. Brilliant dribbling. Augustine has turned his man. Augustine in the 83rd minute has scored. Leeds United have stunned Manchester United at Old Trafford. And Augustine goes right in front of the Man United fans to celebrate. That is peak shithousery from our number 29. Augustine beats David De Gea. No, it's actually Dean Henderson. But anyways, he beats the Man United keeper. Scores the goal that sends us right through to the Champions League. 
Oh my god, what a moment this is of this series. We've humiliated Man United now at Old Trafford. They're out of the Champions League and we're in. Another big game and another big game performance from Augustine as we send Man United packing. No Champions League football for them and with that, we've guaranteed ourselves a spot in the Champions League next season. Let's go. I still cannot believe it, man. We've done it. What a season and to finish it off by beating Man United at Old Trafford just makes it even more perfect. What a season it's been. That's it. That's done. Leeds United Champions League football next season. I can't wait for season three now because it's going to be so much fun. We might have the firepower to push for the Premier League title and even compete in the Champions League. So who knows? But season three is going to be epic. Now we do have one more game to go through, which we are just going to simulate against Burnley. Final game of the season. Let's just get it out of the way. We've got nothing to play for. Champions League is in the bag. We do lose this game, which is a bummer and we do pick up an injury which is also a bit of a bummer let's hope it's not too serious yeah just six days that is that is perfectly fine but we did it we've actually pulled it off premier league third in the league we finished above chelsea and we're in the champions league for next season that is that is just surreal we've done it guys we've actually done it congrats to man city they've won the league this season we finish third Chelsea complete the top four United out of the top four let's see which teams have gotten themselves relegated West Brom Sheffield and Preston top scorers in the Premier League it's Bruno Fernandes who picks up the golden boot with 29 goals Pulisic with 29 as well that's a bit mad we do have Augustine in 14th spot we do have Cavani in fourth spot with 22 goals what a season he's had but yeah, two players in there in the top 15. Nice to see David Brooks picks up the top assisted award with 23 assists. That is mad. I think he's broken the Premier League assist record with that. Let's see what's happening in the other cup competitions as Liverpool end up winning the FA Cup. What about the Carabao Cup? Spurs end up winning a trophy finally. And in the UEFA Super Cup, it was Lazio who won that. Champions League. Last season, it was Atletico Madrid. This year, Inter Milan win the Champions League. That is a bit of a surprise. What about the Europa League? It's Spurs who win two trophies in a season. Fair enough. That's that's brilliant from them. Now, before we move on, let's discuss a bit of transfer business because this is pretty important for future seasons. So first of all, James is going to stay at the club. I think he's still in his prime, so I'm not too concerned about that. I know he's on super high wages, but I'd still like to keep him. Cavani, though, even though he's had a phenomenal season, scoring 22 and assisting 13, it might be time to sell him and free up those wages since we're anyway adding Rodrigo to our team for free. So that's something to consider. Pablo Hernandez is a player I'm trying to offload to free up those wages, but it's going to be difficult to pull off. But apart from that, let me know what you guys think about the Cavani situation because if we want to spend big in, in, in Season 3, we'll need to maybe sell some of the highest wage earners at the club. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. For now, let's wrap up Season 2 with, of course, all the stats. Cavani indeed finishes as our top goal scorer with 22 goals in the Premier League this season and 13 assists in total. Augustine finishes on 18. James with 16. What a season he's had from midfield, but he's just failed his objective by one goal contribution. That is a harsh one to take. Brooks comes in with 11 goals. Gelhart with 3. Phillips with 3. Billy Gilmore with 3 and so on. Now in terms of assists, David Brooks has smashed it. 24 assists. Wow. Cavani coming in with 13, James with 8, Gilmore with 5, and so on. Player growth-wise, it's also been a fantastic season. Players like Augustine growing massively, Billy Gilmore as well, Dest, Foyt, Ben White. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Now, of course, on the other end of the spectrum, we've seen players like Cavani, Pablo, all go down by a couple of ratings. So it's now time for the end of season awards ceremony. I know you guys love this segment, so let's get this one underway. Starting off with our best transfer of this season we're also going to include pre-contract signings so it's a pretty interesting one i'm going with edinson cavani and james rodriguez i know these were two obvious choices but you can't look past their stats for this season cavani has been unbelievable james rodriguez the same so it's between the two of them best transfer of the season up to you guys to choose. Let me know in the comment section. Next up, we've got young player of the season. Two really top prospects, two first team players as well. It's between Billy Gilmore and Serginio Dest, the American and the Scotsman. Billy Gilmore has been 
one of our first team midfielders this season, taking that spot over from Pablo and he's put in a really good shift. Dest has been our starting right back, replaced Ailing brilliantly. What a season he's had. So it's between the two of them. You guys make your pick. Next up, we've got the goal of the season. And once again, we've got the same player scoring the two goals that are nominated. So take a look at the goals and decide which one you find better. Both the goals are from James Rodriguez. First free kick now with James Rodriguez. I am so excited to take this one. Let's see if we can curl this in. Imagine he scores with his first free kick. James comes so close and it's in. Oh my god. Opening match day of the Premier League. James Rodriguez. His first game as a Leeds player and he's just pulled that off. Goes backwards for Calvin Phillips and now it's James who could turn. Does so. Now back to James. Chance for him to score. He strikes it so well. James Rodriguez. What? The power behind that shot. I haven't seen a shot like that in career mode for a long time. And now the final category and the big one, player of the season. Of course, it's between Edinson Cavani and David Brooks. Both these two had to get nominated, our top goal scorer and our top assister. It's been a season where David Brooks has become the protagonist, probably our most important player along with maybe Augustine. But yeah, David Brooks was just outstanding. Breaking the Premier League assist record is no joke. And he definitely deserves a spot here to be nominated. Cavani, on the other hand, what a season he's had. He's shown that age is just a number. So many goals, so many assists and so many big performances. So it's between the two of them, Cavani and Brooks. Make your pick for our player of the season. And with that, guys, end of season awards wrapped up. Not gonna lie, I didn't expect to fail four out of the six objectives, but that's exactly what's happened. We only managed to complete a couple of the objectives, the dynamic duo and the top six, which means we'll only get an additional 10 million for next season, which is still a good amount, but it could have been a lot more if we just had a bit more luck. And well, it is now time to wrap up this season with Leeds. I mean, it's it's truly been incredible. Finishing third in the Premier League, who would have thought in just our second season with the club? It's, it's fantastic. Next season, though, we're going for even more. We really are going for even more and I can't wait for the next season. It's, it's going to be epic. Season 3 might just prove to be better than how epic Season 2 was. And let's hope I'll see you guys there. But for now, we're ending off the video. Drop a like if you've enjoyed Season 2 with Leeds. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys very soon for another season with Leeds.